So, I was talking about maybe having to make another video and I feel like I need to get it off my chest and out of my head. So I'm going to be talking about the criminal justice, uh, open parentheses, incitement to violence or hatred and hate offences, close parentheses, Bill 2002. Uh, we're required to bring something like this in since we ratified the Treaty of Amsterdam in 2008, which is uh, specifically the Council Framework Decision 2008 uh, slash 913 slash JHA of 28th November 2008 on combating certain forms of racism, uh, forms and expressions of racism and xenophobia by means of criminal law. Uh, point nine on the opening page of it is that hatred should be understood as referring to hatred based on race, colour, religion, descent, or national or ethnic, ethnic origin. And in section 6.1, each member state, <clears throat> each member state shall uh, take the necessary measures to ensure that uh, legal and that a legal person held liable pursuant to Article Five One is punishable by effective, proportionate, and dissuasive penalties, which shall include criminal or non-criminal fines and may include other penalties. So we're required to bring this in because we signed up to the Article of, uh, to the Treaty of Amsterdam. Okay, now. All the bills that I've just read out and things like that all say hatred is hatred is hatred. And I'll give you a couple of definitions of hatred that I found. Uh, hate. Intense hostility and aversion usually deriving from fear, anger or a sense of injury. That's in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. The Collins dictionary defines it as extremely strong feeling of dislike for someone or something. And then finally, hate derives from a strong dislike or ill will towards persons or things. As an emotional attitude, a person may oppose, detest, or despise contact with a thing or person. And that's from BibleStudyTools.com. Okay, so that's what hate is. Should it need to be explained in, the, and in you know, as many words as I just have in a bill? No, because the the bill is required to use words that are most easily understood and everyone has a fair definition of what hate is. I would imagine. There we go. The reason we're bringing this in is it replaces the old law from 1989, uh, the Protection uh, of Incitement and Hatred Act. It's to replace that and update it. Okay. Uh, Short title and commencement. This act may be cited as the Criminal Justice Incitement to Violence or Hatred and Hate Offences Act 2023 and shall come into effect whenever the minister brings it into effect. Uh, it is meaning protection. It is to protect certain individuals or groups of individuals under the usual uh, protected characteristics that are cited in the Equality Act of 2002, those being race, colour, nationality, religion, national or ethnic origin, descent, gender, sex characteristics, sexual orientation or disability. References to, dis uh, that's uh, Article 3, uh, and then to Article 3 to be refers to descent, including references to a person or groups of persons who descend from persons who could be identified by certain characteristics, such as race or colour, but not necessarily all of those characteristics still exist. Okay. Uh, sexual orientation has the same meaning as it has in section 2.1 of the Equality Act, uh, Equal Status Act 2000, as in, uh, and that is quoted as heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. Uh, there's no mention of asexual, aromantic, pansexual, etc., 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 which is convenient. Uh, references to sex characteristics shall be constructed as a reference to the physical or bio and biological features of a person relating to sex and disability has the same meaning as section 21 of the Equality St Equal Status Act of 2000 and gender means the gender of a person or the gender which a person expresses as the person's preferred gender or with which the person identifies and includes transgender and a gender other than those of male and female. Okay. Seems fairly straightforward. Uh, section 4 is repeal, section 5 is expenses, section 6 is interpretation and application. 
information systems, material means anything that is capable of being looked at, read, watched, or listened to, either directly or after conversion from data in, in an stored in another form. Public place means any place which to which the public have access, whether as of a right or by permission, and whether subject to or free of charge. Reasonable and genuine contribu contribution. This is kind of the get out clause for anyone who might face a charge under the uh, under the act. Reasonable and genuine contribution in relation to literary, artistic, political, scientific, religious or academic discourse means a contribution that is considered by a reasonable person as being reasonably necessary or incidental to such discourse. Uh, so this includes, you know, TV, radio debates, media, uh, conversations, debates, uh, but does not, in my opinion, include the spread of misinformation about people who are protected under the bill. Okay. Uh, section 6.2, for the purposes of this part, a, a person shall be regarded as communicating material to the public or a section of the public if the person display A, displays, publishes, distributes or disseminates this, the material B, shows or plays the material, or C, makes the material available in any other way, including through the use of an information system, which is the internet, basically, to the public or to a section of the public. Uh, under Section 7, offence and offensive incitement to violence or hatred against a person on account of their protected characteristics. Subjects to uh, Section 1, se seven one su subject to subsections 2, which is the interpretation, and four, uh, which is the, re uh, the repeal of the Protection to Incitement to Hatred Act 1989, and section 11, Protection of Expression, a person should be guilty of a, an offence under the section if A, the person A1 communicates uh, the material to the public or a section of the public, or two, believes behaves in a public place in a manner that is likely to incite violence or hatred against a person or a group of persons on account of their protected characteristics or any of those characteristics, and b, the person does so with the intent to incite violence or hatred against such a person or groups of persons on account of those characteristics or any of those characteristics or being reckless as to whether such violence or hatred is thereby incited. What does that mean? By the way, I will, if I can, I'll have to edit this, which means I'll put in screenshots of what I'm reading um, uh, with or without my notes, but you can, you can revise those. <sighs> you go to most pride parades, there's generally a counter parade, an anti-pride, um, because we can't be out flaunting ourselves and gallivanting in public and having a gay old time or a queer old time. Um, so, arguably, because the counter parade is trying to, uh, you know, incite hatred and or violence towards the pride parade, arguably they're committing a crime under this bill. That depends on whether or not they're reported and whether or not the, the Gardaí decide to do anything about it and whether or not the, D, the director of public prosecutions decides to do anything about it and then what the judge decides to do about it. So, what was I going to read next? Uh, section 3, in any proceedings, uh, section 7, 3, uh, in any proceedings for an offence under this section, it shall be a defence to prove that the material concerned, or insofar as appropriate, the behaviour concerned, consisted solely of a, a reasonable or genuine contribution to literary, artistic, political, scientific, religious or academic discourse. Um, so that's, you know, protection against your deeply held beliefs um, or, you know, debate on law or social policy. Um, also, there's a piece in here about absolute privilege. So that's the second point, uh, 7.3b, a statement that is subject to of the defence of absolute privilege. That's parliamentary privilege. Anyone in the Dáil or the Shannad can say whatever they like under parliamentary privilege. Uh, so they can name people, they can make assertions and assuasions and incite in inferences and everything else, and it's protected speech. Okay, you can't you can't sue somebody for calling somebody something because they called you something in the doll. You can try, but it's protected privilege. Section nine provisions relating to offences under section seven and eight. Uh, 
this is, I think this is the one, or the it's section 10. Yeah, I'll read section 9 first. Uh, provisions relating to offences under section 7 and 8. Uh, 9, 1, a person may be found guilty of an offence under section 7 or 8, irrespective of whether the communication of material or behaviour, uh, the subject of the offence, was successful in inciting another person to violence or hatred against a person or a group of persons. So whether or not you succeeded in encouraging somebody else to do something out of hatred because of your hatred or the hatred that you're espousing for whatever reason is irrelevant. The fact that you were doing it in the first place makes you the responsible one, whether or not it has the desired effect or not. Uh, moving on to section 10. This is the one that most people are having the problem with, which, okay, fair enough. Section 10, offences, uh, offence of preparing or possessing material likely to incite violence or hatred against a person on account of their protected characteristics. Excuse me. So section 10, 1. Subject to subsections 2 and 3 and section 11, a person shall be guilty of an offence under this section if the person A. Prepares or possesses material that is likely to incite violence or hatred against a person or a group of persons on account of their protected characteristics or any of those characteristics with a view to the material being communicated to the public or a section of the public, whether himself or herself or another person, uh, whether by himself, herself or another person, and B, prepares or possesses such material with intent to incite violence or hatred against such a person or a group of persons on account of those characteristics or any of those characteristics or being reckless as to whether such violence or hatred is thereby incited. So again, whether you're if you can, if you prepare this stuff or you give it out, Regardless of whether it affects other people and causes them to act out of the hatred that you're espousing, you are still guilty of having it, okay? Uh, section 10.2. In any proceedings for an offence under this section, it shall be a, a defence to prove that the material concerned consisted solely of a. A reasonable and genuine contribution to literary, artistic, political, scientific, religious or academic discourse. Again, debates, performances, etc. Uh, conversations in the Dáil or the Shannad, uh, media conversations, uh, so prime time having someone like me and somebody like, not going to name names, somebody from the other side or and a differing opinion to me, um, all of that's fine. You can still talk about it. It's not a chilling effect. It shouldn't have a chilling effect. Uh, uh, and again, to be a statement that is subject to the defense of absolute privilege, that's CDs and politicians, and then material that is necessary for any other lawful purpose, including law enforcement or the in investigation of prosecution or prosecution of an offense. So if the Gardaí then take the offend potential offending material, they are protected against it because they are doing it with the intent to pursue an investigation. Uh, 10.3. In any proceedings for an offence under the section where it is proved that the accused person was in possession of the material such is, as is referred to in subsection 1, and it is reasonable to assume that the material was not intended for the personal use of the person, the person shall be presumed until the contrary is proved to have been in possession of the material in contravention of subsection 1. So, this is the guilty until proven innocent thing that everyone is talking about, I'm assuming. And again, my lay legal brain is about to try and unpick that one for you. Um, this says that you're guilty of having the material regardless of what you were trying to do with it. Okay. Uh, in any proceedings was in possession of materials such as is referred to in subsection one. And it is reasonable to assume that the material was not intended for the personal use of the person. Okay. Again, if you can if you can prove that this is just you know you collecting you know bits of posters or uh, material or videos and things of like that, or you were looking at stuff online or whatever it is, and you can prove that it was for your personal use, then you're generally should be fine. Uh, you're you given the presumption of innocence, and if you can explain that it wasn't intended for any kind of public uh, dissemination or anything like that, 
generally you should be fine. Again, this comes down to the decisions of the person who reported to the Gardaí, the Garda who are in who are questioning you. The, if that goes further, the Director of Public Prosecutions and then the judge to whom you will be presented to uh, for their judgment based on whatever it is that you are in possession of. I heard, heard uh, a lot of people, but particularly senators, saying, well, this, you know, this could put me at jeopardy because I could send them something that would be definitely considered offensive. And if I then reported to the Guardian and said, well, such and such is in possession of such and such, um, then I that could be me, you know, out to entrap or, you know, wrongfully accuse people. Well, I'm not convinced that that's not going to happen in some particular case or another, or somebody is not going to allege that that is what is happening more likely. Um, again, there are protections within the bill to say that, you know, you can explain yourself. Simple. The big one. Uh, section 11. Protection of freedom of expression. For the purposes of this part, any material or behaviour is not taken to incite violence or hatred against a person or a group of persons on account of their protected characteristics or any of those characteristics solely on the basis that the material uh, that, that material or behaviour includes or involves discussion or criticism of matters relating to the protected characteristics. So again, this comes down to, you know, me saying, well, I don't believe in this because of my religious character, my religious beliefs or... Um, you know, stuff that's on the sign, media, memes, media, TV, radio, etc. It's the use of it as well. So you just putting this out there is one thing. Your intentions are the other thing. Um, so uh, this last bit, uh, which comes under part three, number 17, amendment to the Criminal Damage Act, uh, section B to a... Sorry, Section 2A, damage, damaging property aggravated by hate. 2A1, a person should be guilty of an offence under this section if he or she commits an offence under Section 2, which is aggravated by hatred for the purposes of this section. Uh, 2A, sorry, 2A2, uh, subsection A, subsection 1. Uh, where the where there is a specific victim of the offence, one at the time of committing the offence, or immediately before or after doing so, the person demonstrates hatred towards the victim. And uh, subsection A2, the hatred is on account of the victim's membership or presumed membership of a group defined by reference to a protected characteristic. Uh, or B, uh, whether or not this is a specific, there is a specific victim of the offence, the offence is motivated wholly or partly by hatred towards a group of persons on account of uh, the group being defined by the reference to protected characteristics. Uh, and then 172A3. Uh, it is immaterial whether or not the an accused person's hatred is also on account to en is also on account to any extent of any other factor. So that bit about motivated wholly or partly um, by hatred towards a group of persons on account of them being uh, part of a uh, protected characteristic. And then the bit about the hatred is on account of the victim's membership or presumed membership of a group defined by reference to a protected, protected characteristic. Brilliant example of that is, you know, the the attacks on particularly young women on night buses and some men, um, you know, because the two women were being asked to kiss each other. And then when they decided they weren't going to do that, somebody hit them. I'll try and find a link to that and put it down below for you. Or more recently, the attack in Navin, for example, um, there is no understanding as to what the person who is the victim, what their identity or anything is, but reasonable to assume that it was based on a, at least a presumption of them being part of a group that is under the protected characteristics. So there we have it. That's what the Incitement to Hatred Bill is, the so-called anti-free speech. You have always had your freedom of speech, you will always have your freedom of speech. This bill just, you know, puts out a few more clearer parameters whereby if you say something, you may be required to defend it a little bit more rigorously than you normally might be asked to defend it. 
simple. If people want to argue that, by all means, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. But that's the point. This does not and should not stifle free speech. It should not stifle debates. You know, people having a conversation are not all of a sudden going to be informed upon to the police because of what it is they're saying or things that they're talking about or the way they're acting in certain parts of in public. <clears throat> so I get why there's a big brouhaha about it. Do I think the bill is necessary? It shouldn't be. And arguably we have other bills that uh, deal with defamation and assault and um, hate speech and things like that as well. But clearly the bill is out of date. We've been, you know, asked and required to improve legislation that protects people within society for 20 odd years. Uh, if you go by UN reports or the EU reports uh, about how countries are enacting different bits of legislation that they're required to because we signed up to various treaties. Whether you agree with it or not, is it likely to affect you this particular bill? Most likely not. You know, there was a video on Twitter recent uh, today, actually, I think, where some American person or Canadian person, I can't remember which, uh, was walking up and down Grafton Street with a particular board on saying that uh, children shouldn't be given puberty blockers. And I think he explained the back of his board as saying it was his definition of what a guy is. Um, people found that offensive. Agarda was informed, Agarda went and questioned them, all of it was put online by the person holding the board, and yeah, they were not warned or questioned or, anything, or cautioned, they were questioned about it, there was, there was a warning verbalised to say, listen, you are required to stay away from this particular part of the street that you're on, please do not go anywhere near it, if you do so I may be forced to return. That was it. You can find that video online as well if you want. I'm not. An, I'm not going to start, you know, boosting Twitter's algorithms. Um, but that's it. That's what the bill is. I will edit this. I will put in the screenshots so you can read it for yourself. I'll leave a link to the bill and any accompanying notes and information that I have read. And you can have your say on it. Okay. There we go. Any other conversation that you want to have or topics that you want me to discuss. Leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to it. Thank you very much.